although there are a few types of diatoms which rely on other organisms for food. They are heterotrophs, or at least on occasion can be. Virtually all of them perform photosynthesis and are extremely important as parts of the phytoplankton. In fact, they may represent more than 40% of the primary production found in the ocean. You can also find them in fresh water or even in damp soil, almost anywhere where there is moisture. While they can adhere to the bottom in shallow water or to other algae and other organisms sometimes linked together with a slime-like suspension around them, the majority of them float in water and have the challenge of staying in the upper layers so that they can access sunlight. Some rely on wind to suspend this water. However, many produce lipids which make them less likely to sink or sometimes adhere together forming chains which help them float. In some areas, their success is tied to favorable conditions which can change with the season or the circulation of nutrients and populations may boom at certain times and then decline in others. Diatoms may produce resting spores which will sink and be dormant until the conditions are favorable once again. Diatoms are incredibly important for other organisms. Given that they represent such an incredible percentage of the phytoplankton, they are very important in food chains for organisms as diverse as mollusks and fish. They also produce more oxygen in the air than all of the rainforests on Earth, so they are incredibly important there. They help to regulate the pH of ocean water, and they are so thus so very important. There is so much about them that we don't know. There are so many species which haven't even been described yet. This is why it is troubling that climate change may be affecting them in a negative way. Given that they are so important for oxygen production and food chains, any negative impact of climate change could therefore affect the entire marine ecosystem. There have not always been diatoms represented in the fossil record. They are first known in the Jurassic period in the Mesozoic era. They have done well in the Cenozoic era in part because of the expansion of grasslands partway through the Cenozoic. Grasslands have made silica more available in aquatic environments, and this has promoted a great increase in the success of diatoms.